Hi everybody, welcome to our next week of home gardening kits. This week's lesson is going to focus on two things. We're going to talk about watering, how much and how often, and how to look for uh, water stress in plants. And additionally, we're going to look at the health of our transplants to sort of assess plant health, make sure they're doing well, as well as the stuff we direct seeded. So our first topic is going to be how to water your vegetable starts and really any plants properly. So the number one thing to consider here is that you want to be watering the roots and not the leaves. The roots is, of course, where the plants take in their water. So depending on the size of the plant and the size of the root system, uh, some of these plants are going to use more water than others. As you might imagine, as you might remember, um, our tomato start had already a much larger root system. So this is plant is going to be using a lot more water than, say, our lettuce and our uh, cilantro here or our baby mustard greens. However, if we look at these baby mustard greens, there is actually a lot of surface area of roots here because there's so many plants versus just one. So although this plant individually is going to use more, this whole pot might need a similar amount of water. So the, um, here's my recommendations for watering. So what you're going to want to do is um, instead of like looking at your plant for water stress, because when plants get water stress, they start to wilt. And by that point, it's already a little too late. So as an example of a water stress plant, I just grabbed this from our greenhouse. This is some broccoli that we already planted, so we don't really need it anymore. But you can see these leaves are pretty flaccid, so they are no longer maintaining the turgor pressure, meaning um, they're not respiring. So remember, how plants use water is they take it in from their roots, and then some of it is respired through their stomata in the bottom of their leaves. So when plants have access to enough water, they will maintain what's called turgor pressure, meaning like on this tomato, it is holding itself up really nicely, or this cilantro is a great example. These leaves are holding themselves up. So if there's not enough water in the soil, that turgor pressure is lost because there's no water that can enter the roots. So the reason you don't want to sort of monitor the leaves as an indicator of whether a plant has enough water is um, if you see your plant losing turgor pressure it's already a bit too late. Now the plant will recover just fine but um, during periods where it's lost turgor pressure and it doesn't have water it's not photosynthesizing as well it's not taking soil nutrients so it stunts the plant's growth. So what I recommend for monitoring water in a plant is to simply just use your finger. And you want to be putting your finger in the soil as deep as the root system is. So I know my tomatoes about six, six inches deep in this pot. So I can get my finger most of the way down there and it is nice and moist. So you do not want it too wet and you do not want it too dry. You want your finger to come out and feel just like slightly damp. That's gonna be a good indicator. Another test you can do is to simply lift up your pot. If it feels pretty heavy, there's a lot of water in there, and that's a good sign. So another thing that might surprise you is if the very tip tippy top of your soil dries out, you might say, oh no, my plant needs water. But um, really, it might be totally moist down where the root system is, which is where the plant gets its water. So therefore, it's not a problem. So with toma this tomato, the roots are pretty deep. So water's going to stay deeper in the soil because there's less evaporation, right? But if I go over to my little mustard mix here, um, these roots, I'll just pull one out to show you, are extremely shallow. So this root is literally maybe half an inch deep in the soil. So if that top half inch of soil dries out, I'm going to be in trouble and these little grains are going to wilt very quickly. So um, same, same test though, I'm just putting my finger in the soil and making sure that it's nice and moist. But um, here's sort of the difference. For this tomato, I might need to give it more water about once a week to keep it happy and keep where its roots are nice and moist. But for this um, mustard mix, I might want to give it just a little every single day. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now as a demonstration. And I mean a little, just a little water here. It's all good. Double check with my finger. We're good. Nice and moist. So commonly people overwater versus underwater. So it's, it's, you might get in the habit of um, trying to give your plants too much water. And the reason that's an issue is if the soil is waterlogged, um, the root system cannot breathe and cannot access, access oxygen, which is still really important for plant growth. So you might see yellowing on your plants. You might see them just getting kind of like weird and droopy and changing color on the leaves. So um, 
that could be an indicator that you're giving too much water. So I encourage you to use your finger test. You don't want to stick your finger down there and it shouldn't feel like a mud fit. It should just feel like light moisture on your fingers. And again, so the two tests are use your finger or you can lift up the pot and see how heavy it is. Because the water, of course, is most of the weight in soil. So if I lifted up a pot and found that it was really, really lightweight, that might indicate that, especially lower in the pot, there is not a lot of water going on. Um, finally, water is gonna um, move to the dry places, right? So even though, for example, these mustard greens do not only need water, they can only access water in the top half inch. If the bottom of this pot were really, really dry, that water is gonna quickly infiltrate and make its way all the way to the bottom. So even though I'm only maintaining the, um, the moisture in sort of the top half inch, the whole pot should still be fairly wet. So here is my home garden kit that I've put together. Um, and the, what I wanna talk about now is transplant health specifically. So we have to remember that when you planted your vegetable starts in these pots, you were moving them from one habitat to another. So plants will often exhibit stress um, and you might see some die off. So like as an example, some of the tips of my tomato leaves look a little bit sad. It looks like I had some leaves die. And that may worry you because um, when plants are stressed out, they can look kind of sad. You might see some die off of lower leaves, but it is actually totally fine and really, really normal. Very rarely do we transplant anything without seeing some sort of impact or damage. Just think about picking yourself up and having to move to like a whole new house or apartment. Um, that would sort of impact you in some way, right? So it's the same thing with plants. So what you wanna check for on your transplants, like your tomato, is the new growth. So as sort of a plant anatomy review, our new growth is always coming from the top of the plant. So the plant is growing from its terminal bud. Um, and we want this new growth to look nice and green and healthy. So everything on this tomato is looking really, really good. So I am not concerned at all. It's gonna concern great. I even have a first set. This is a little set of flowers here coming in. So that's pretty exciting. So if I look at my cilantro and lettuce, they both look really happy. I'll again notice that uh, the very bottom leaves of this lettuce are looking a little sad and dying back, but all the new growth, I see a new tiny little leaf. You can see that there coming in. And this lettuce transplant looks really healthy. Cilantro looks awesome. It just didn't get sad at all and it's bouncing right back. Now my basil, is looking a little sad. So um, concerns I would have, this sort of bronze color in the leaf indicates maybe some cold damage, look like I might have a slug coming in here and munching. I am noticing though still, new growth looks good. So I'm not gonna ditch these plants yet, they're still looking pretty happy. You wanna give your transplants at least a full week to recover before you're saying like, oh, these aren't gonna work or they are gonna work. So um, finally, my squash plant, again, new growth looks awesome. We even got some flowers starting already, which is pretty exciting. You can see these little flower buds. Um, and then I have this one leaf that's looking a little sad. So that leaf's probably gonna die back, but that's all right. We'll get plenty of new growth and that squash is gonna be super happy. So overall, my transplants looked pretty good, minus the basil, that's the only one I'm a little worried about. But again, you wanna focus on, if the new growth looks good, your transplants are probably gonna be just fine. So I'll also show you the stuff I direct seeded. Um, this was my mustard mix. So if you remember, this is something I seed really densely because this is gonna be nice little baby salad greens. So they're coming in really well. They came in pretty consistently. I've got a couple stragglers here, um, but overall they look good and healthy. So everything's looking good there. And you can see I've got my first bean, but both of those beans I seeded are sprouting. So my direct seeds also look good, but you aren't gonna see the same level of shock with direct seeded things because um, this is the only habitat they know. So there's no adjustment period. These plants aren't adjusting to temperature, a change in the amount of light, um, like a change in just local micro weather conditions. So these plants are gonna be a lot healthier from the outset. So hopefully that's been helpful. We've gone over how to water correctly, as well as how to sort of assess your transplants and direct seeds for health. So hopefully all your stuff is looking good. I'm in, looking forward to seeing your observational journals and a couple of you have been sending pictures, which I'm really enjoying seeing too. So 
Happy gardening, and I will see you next week.